The early days of the Boy Scouts of America were directly tied to the YMCA, with YMCA chapters all over the country using copies of Baden Poles Scouting for Boys and Ernest Thompson Seton's Birch Bark Rolls to help deliver scout-like programs to boys. In the late summer of 1910, these two groups came together at the first official campout of the BSA to learn more about this new scouting program concept. An artifact on display here at the National Scouting Museum is directly tied to that campout, and we'll learn more about it in this edition of Artifact of the Week. In 1905, Baden Pohl published a series of six pamphlets called Scouting for Boys. The lessons found in these booklets were derived from his earlier publication called Aids to Scouting, which he wrote to help better prepare young Englishmen for service in the British Army. In August of 1907, Baden Pohl tested his scouting theories with a group of boys on Brown Sea Island in England. Following his success at Brown Sea Island, he republished Scouting for Boys as a single volume and the scouting movement took hold. In the United States, there were several organizations such as the YMCA, Ernest Thompson Seton's Woodcraft Indians, and Daniel Carter Beard's Sons of Daniel Boone that were working to deliver very similar programs to the youth of America. In fact, Seton's Woodcraft Indians and Pole's Scouting were very similar in what they offered and to some degree the methods used to deliver the program to the youth. By February 1910, William D. Boyce had made his famous trip to London where he learned of the scouting movement and came back to the United States, where he essentially purchased the name and incorporated the Boy Scouts of America. He then began gathering many of these scout-like organizations together, particularly drawing on the YMCA, Seton's Woodcraft Indians, and Beard Sons of Daniel Boone to come together and give life to the fledgling organization. From August 16th through September 1st, 1910, Ernest Thompson Seton and William Murray of the YMCA hosted the first official BSA campout at Silver Bay on the western shore of Lake George in upstate New York. This area is part of the YMCA's Silver Lake Association facility, and it was here that Seton and Murray demonstrated the leadership and outdoor skill ideas being put forward as the Boy Scouts of America to 140 youth and more than 200 adult leaders. While baden Pole was unable to attend, he did send W.B. Wakefield to attend and to help train the adult scoutmasters. Um, I want to identify a boy. You see the boy right there with the feather sticking up there? His name is William Adel, and he is the only person we know of that wrote anything about this encampment. This was a boy that was at the encampment, and uh, he... Uh, He's the only one I know of that wrote anything about it. But he didn't write it as a diary. It was written many, many years later. I think he was in his 90s when he wrote this up. And yet that's the only source we have of what actually happened at that encampment. And here's one of the things that he wrote. From the very first day, Seton's program of woodcraft went into operation. There were nature walks, tree and plant recognition sessions, and nighttime lectures on stars. Then there were discussions on health, first aid, camp sanitation, campfire cooking, survival in the woods, and all the hundreds of things a woodsman must know. All of these activities were met with unexpected enthusiasm. There was a sense of something important about to happen. Daniel Carter Beard was also in attendance at this first camp out for at least the final week. During the camp out, boys and the adult leaders learned about English scouting, woodcraft skills, Native American games, and campfire stories. Each group of boys brought with them a homemade teepee to sleep in, and these were organized in loose circles throughout the area. Ernest Thompson Seton also brought and slept in his own teepee that had this curtain attached to it to cover the doorway. Seton is believed to have either purchased or been given this door cover in the late 1800s. Several scholars have studied the artifact and believe it to be of Cheyenne origin. One scholar is convinced it is from a Cheyenne medicine lodge and is possibly the only one still in existence from that era. The encampment at Silver Bay was a success and was instrumental in securing the future of the Boy Scouts of America. It provided potential scouts and scouters with the opportunity to live and experience the outdoor skills, Native American culture, and leadership opportunities that baden Pole, Ernest Thompson Seton, Daniel Carter Beard, Charles Eastman, William D. Boyce, Edgar Robinson, and many others were promoting. 
It lit the fire that sent scouting all over the country as these boys and adult leaders went back to their communities to launch Boy Scout troops and share scouting in their communities. Since that time, more than 80 million youth have benefited from what scouting has to offer. If you would like to learn more about the first encampment, look for the PBS documentary called The First Encampment. This 2010 video was produced and directed by then 15-year-old Eagle Scout named Blake Courtright. I recently spoke with Blake and he tells me there are plans for an updated release of the video in the works. I, for one, am looking forward to what new material Blake has uncovered about this great piece of our scouting history. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Join us next time as we learn more about the history of the BSA through the artifacts found at the National Scouting Museum, Philmont Scout Ranch.